Hello, I am Devamshu Mukherjee from ORNL and today I will be talking about STEMTOL, an open source Python package for analyzing electron microscopy data. So, you may be wondering, what's the point of another near package? You already have PIXSTEM, HyperSpy, Pi4DSTEM and so on. The thing is, each of these individual packages are specialized for some certain electron microscopy application. We want to build an umbrella package that does everything. And that's why STEM tool was designed. The structure of this package is, this, is in, in the form of sub-modules. So the main module STEM tool only has a timer function inside it and everything else is in, in seven sub-modules. The first sub-module is AFIT, which does atom position fitting and drift correction. In atom position fitting, it takes its atomic resolution stem data, fits the positions with in a 2D Gaussian peaks, and for drift correction, you can pass a stack of fast corrected stem images to correct for scan drift. The second submodule is GPA. GPA does geometric phase analysis of atomic resolution stem images or even TM images. The third submodule is DPC. DPC is for differential phase contrast microscopy and this uh, submodule can do it either for atomic resolution 4D stem images or NBED 4D stem images. The fourth submodule is NBED. It is for strain mapping of 4D stem nanobeam electron diffraction datasets where the condenser aperture is small so that the diffraction spots in the seabed pattern do not overlap and these individual patterns are fitted with Gaussian peaks so as to get the unit cell for each peak position, <coughs> scan position, and then get the strain from there. The fifth submodule is yields. It is for analyzing mostly core loss stem yields data sets. After that, there is SIM. SIM does elastic stem image simulations. Since there is no inelastic stem imaging inside the SIM, you cannot actually simulate yields data sets, but you can simulate normal stem images or 4D stem stem images also. The last and final submodule is util. Think of it almost like a Swiss army knife, which has image processing utilities like sobel filtering, cross correlation, Gaussian peak fitting, and so on. So this package has been speeded up either through a combination of Numba or Dask. The Numba is JIT compiled code, which is JIT means just in time, and this allows extendable easy speed ups across multiple different architectures. It is, we chose Numba or Dask depending on which was the faster option at that point of time. Also, STEM tool is built on very commonly used Python packages like NumPy, SciPy, PyFFTW, and Pillow. Except for PyFFTW, all the, these other packages are a part of a standard Anaconda distribution. And all four of these packages are architecture independent and OS independent. So STEM tool will work on a wide variety of architectures and wide variety of operating systems. If you also download the GitHub repository, you will find out there are Jupyter notebooks, there are around seven Jupyter notebooks detailing the, how the package is used to do analysis, stem analysis uh, like AFA, GP, and so on. And finally, we chose MIT licensing, which is a very permissive free and open source software licensing that has no money involved. Anybody can use it, this is for free. The only thing is if you want to use it further and extend this code toolkit further, you have to cite us. In this talk, say because in the interest of time, I will only talk about four submodules: AFIT, GPA, DPC, and NBED. The first submodule, AFIT. So the AFIT submodule's main core thing is the class known as Atom Fit. So you fit the data as ST at AFIT Atom Fit, and it has three positional arguments: the stem image itself, the calibration value, what is the size of an individual pixel, and the unit of the pixel, which here is nanometer, for example. Then we can check this image by calling the function inside of the class called show image. And you can actually give a positional argument, which is the Gaussian blur that will be used to subtract the background corrected image. The right shows such a show image of the image that will fit inside it. Also, sometimes you do not want a reference region. You do not want to fit your atoms over the whole field of view. So for that, you can actually call atoms define reference and give the positional arguments the four corners. And, you, and then your atom fitting will only work inside that reference region. This parts of this work came out as a PRM paper last year. Also, after this, we can actually call the peaks viz. So the peaks viz has two positional arguments, which is the distance between the peaks and the thresholding. So in the distance here, it is in the units of the nanometer, which was the uh, length units that we chose. And the threshold is how much thresholding to use. 
By the way, if you have not done any define reference before, the whole image is going to be fitted with peaks. After we are done with this, we are, you know we, the peaks, you are happy with the distance threshold values, then you run refine peaks and you can say visualize the peaks to show peaks. In on a two four core MacBook system, which is a 2018 Intel system, it took around 200 seconds to refine around 1500 atoms. So it's pretty fast enough. The next module is GPA. In GPA also there is another class which is called the GPA class inside the GPA submodule and you load the GPA class and you again to give three positional arguments which is the image, the calibration and the calibration units. Once you have loaded the image inside your class you can call the show image function of the class which shows you the image that you have just loaded in. Then in GPA since we actually it required the diffraction spots to be chosen for GPA analysis the next one that we will call function we have to call inside the class is the GPA find spots function. It has two positional arguments which are the two uh, peaks that are going to be chosen. So in the right image you can see the red centered dot is a 0 0 position and we gave 5 0 0 minus 5. The units of them are in nanometers inverse because the calibration units were nanometers. So these were the 5 0 and 0 minus 5 nanometer inverse peaks that we chose. Also remember these are not absolutely accurate peak positions for those diffraction spots. So we have to refine them. To refine them we first need a reference region. And to call the, that's why we call the reference region to the defined reference which also has the four corners as positional arguments which you call that. And then your GPA find spots refinement will occur over this reference region. After you have chosen a reference region and call the spots. Then the next step you run is you refine phase and you, then you can after the phase refinement is done you call the get strain function inside this uh, class and it gives you the four different strain maps. On a four core laptop this whole process again took approximately 60 seconds. Once done you can also even plot them through the GPA plot GPA strain to function inside it and this shows the right image now shows the four different strain maps. Now remember this was a nanoparticle, so because of this anything outside of the nanoparticle the strain maps are not correct. But for normal non-nanoparticle images this works great. After this the next submodule is the DPC submodule. So in the DPC submodule we first load the four, again there is a class which is the atomic DPC class because there are two different classes inside it which is the embed DPC and atomic DPC. I am going to be talking about only the atomic DPC class. So it has the positional arguments as the 4D data set, the simultaneously collected ADF stem image, calibration, the uh, voltage and also the aperture. You need the aperture and the voltage so, as you can, so that you can calculate an, a calibration for the inverse Fourier space. Once done, you can plot those images by the show BF ADF sub function call and as we can see here the left image is the ADF image which was simultaneously collected and the right image which is the brighter image is a synthetic BF stem image. The synthetic BF stem image was generated just by summing up the seabed patterns and as you can see it looks complementary to the ADF stem image. You can also run the get seabed function after that which will give you the mean seabed pattern and we need to actually run that so that we can calibrate our pixel size in our Fourier space. After you have run all these two functions the next step is to run DPC initial DPC. We call it initial DPC because the seabed camera, the 4D stem camera is sometimes misoriented with respect to the optic axis. So first you call it initial DPC, you get and this is calculated by looking at the center of mass shifts. Once you are done, you call DPC correct DPC which compares this result, DPC results with the ADF stem image and then corrects for the scan drift, uh, rotation of the optic axis. So this is the corrected DPC in the X and Y directions. Once you have done that you can also plot them as DPC plot color DPC which will show you the shifts as a, as a function of the rotation angle and the magnitude. In the left you have the image and the right we have a zoomed in section where we are also which is overlaid with the arrows showing the beam shift directions. So using these beam shift directions you can either show the charge or the show the potential. Here I am showing the show, show charge uh, function which will show the charges. Also, since the electron waves are negatively charged waves, that's why there is all it's, this uh, submodule already takes that fact into account, and that which is why this atomic centers are positively charged, which are surrounded by a negatively charged soup. The next submodule, which I'm going to be talking about, is the embed submodule. Unlike the previous three submodules I talked about, this does not have class functions. This is, does not take into account objective-oriented programming. 
to run this, you first take the <coughs> simultaneously collected stem image and you choose a, cent a region of that image where you think the strain variation is the minimal. That is a reference region. From that reference region, you choose a seabed pattern. Now we have found out that seabed pattern itself is not good for analysis. So we have to pre-process that data and we pre-process that data by taking the log of that seabed pattern followed by Sobel filtering the log of that seabed pattern. Once you have done that, you, you can actually now cross correlate it with a ring and you can get the and you can fit it with subpixel Gaussian uh, at subpixel precision Gaussian fits. And the whole process of generating the data for log and Sobel filters is under one single JIT compiled function, which is the log Sobel 4D function. These parts of this work also came out in ACES Catalysis this year. Once you have done that, you can actually call the single function parameters train in ROI, which will do the log filtering, Sobel filtering, then cross correlate it, fit the Gaussian peaks and generate the strain maps for you. Here we are showing the strain maps in the shell and the core of the particle I showed you in the previous slides. And as you can see, the shell is significantly more strained than the core because, and remember, this is actually not strained, but they are actually different compositions with the higher unit cell. And since we do not distinguish, the shell looks more strained as compared to the core, showing that this technique works. So finally, to finish off, if you are interested in STEM tool and this thing, you would like to use it for your future, uh, works, then I would suggest you, you can actually go to the STEM tool readthedocs.io, which is a full documentation website that we have built. All the modules and classes that I've talked about are, are there in STEM tool, have documentation for the parameters and the references, examples and so on. You can look at the, look them up if, as an API reference. If you are interested in actually installing STEM tool, if you want to download the full code along with the Jupyter notebook, notebooks, go to GitHub STEM tool, STEM tool, and you can download it. And since this package is already on the PyPy, you can run pip install stem tool to get the package installed. So some of the current and future work that we are actually working on and we want to go towards in the future and or in the order of import importance is one, we want to make this package Conda installable along with pip installations because it helps Anaconda has a much better package manager. Two, we want to add more support for TM, not just pure stem. We want to add focal series reconstruction, TM yields and so on. Third, we also add an electron diffraction analyzer for analyzing electron diffraction, HRTM diffraction, and also for seabed datasets. Fourth, we want to add support for tychography and EDX analysis. And finally, I want to talk about right now at STEM tools, we are actually doing our input and output through a mixture of NSEMPy and HyperSpy. This is because of the complete variety of file formats in the electron microscopy community from Catan, from Geol, from Neon, from FEI. So we want to actually build a single IO sub-module inside STEM tools where you can load files easily. So, so that, that will make the STEM tool package much more self-contained. And final, our goal, long-term goal, is to have a GUI-based interface based on Qt so that people who are not comfortable with coding on Jupyter Notebooks can also use it. Packages like this is a lot of work and it's great if other people can join this also. So if you're really interested in con con contributing to it, send me a mail at mukherjeeD at ornl.gov or go to the STEM tool GitHub website and you can ask for me to uh, ask me for permission to join this and contribute. Thank you.